Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be a little get ready with me, but also just a life update, just to have a little casual combo with you guys about where I've been and what <clears throat> I've been walking through and you know, things that God's been doing in my life. So I thought it'd be fun to get ready with you guys while I do this. Um, so, um, Today is Saturday and my husband and I are going to go on a little date today and we haven't actually been on a date where it's just the two of us. Um, Saturdays used to always be our date days, but in this past season there has been just so much change in our lives in so many different aspects where we haven't had a uh, regular routine, a regular um, schedule, and there's just been so much change. So I'm looking forward to having this one-on-one -on -one time with him. I just put some sunblock on my face. I'm not, um, sometimes I do foundation church days, but most days I don't. I either don't wear makeup on most days or I just use powder so um, I'm not like a makeup person even though I, you probably would not guess that I used to be a makeup artist for Clinique Cosmetics like many 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 years ago be super into makeup but probably can't tell because I don't really do much with my makeup anymore um, so right now I'm just using this powder by Neutrogena. It's um, pressed powder and it gives a really nice coverage. And um, I don't like, like for myself, too shiny of a look. I, I like it to be a lot more soft and light coverage. So putting that on. Okay, so I wanna share with you guys um, this past season of my life, I am currently in my new office. Um, I am a Christian life coach and my husband and I moved. Um, when did we move? Like a month ago. And we moved into a two bedroom apartment in Austin. We were in a one bedroom apartment in Dripping Springs before and um, we moved because our rent got so high at our last place and we knew that we could move to a, a cheaper place and even bigger so that's what we did um, and now I have my own office here. I'm planning on eventually having in-person sessions um, definitely starting this year 2024 this upcoming year, 2024. Um, but I need to finish decorating. I have a lot of decorating to do. So I'm just putting on a little bit of bronzer because I feel like the powder does kind of like wash out my color. So just a little bit of bronzer. Um, we moved into this place and it's much bigger and it's nice. It's got more of a cozier feel. It's not as like a modern or updated as our last place. And something that I um, realized since this past season with all this change, and I'm gonna like break down the things while I'll just do it now. Okay, so um, my job changed. Um, I was working with these kiddos for uh, about three years since being here in Texas and I had an amazing time working with them. I was super super blessed with that job. Um, blessed with an amazing salary, um, amazing schedule, just so so generously blessed by God through this incredible family. Um, I was kind of like a nanny, but I'd also do like coaching um, with them. So 
Bible study. So yeah, but with that job, um, my I had this incredible salary. Um, my apartment, I got my apartment when I first got the job. Um, and I had a car with that job, a nanny card. So I had like so much security and so much comfort. And when God told me it was time for me to step into my coaching business um, full time, I'd always been doing coaching since 2016, but um, I tried to go full time in 2016, took a leap of faith. I was not, it was like the right thing, but the wrong time. And I ended up hitting rock bottom in 2017. After that leap of faith, lost everything. Um, I was in the new age at the time, trying to be a spiritual life coach. Always trying to follow God, but I lacked a lot of knowledge in the Bible. And Hosea 4, 6 says, my people um, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that was definitely part of my story. So I lost tons of stuff. Um, I literally lost the life I had. And Jesus picked me up, changed my whole life. So. Um, eventually became a Christian life coach and I was coaching consistently weekly ever since then but I always like kept that as a coaching business just a small thing on the side sometimes I even look at it as, as a hobby versus like my main income or my you know real job but I, I, it was like always a dream that I had deep in my heart so I was just hanging on over here well uh, last year, God was putting on my heart that my time with the kiddos was coming to an end and that it was going to be time for me to go all in on this coaching career of mine. And so I was like, okay, God, if this is the plan, then I need to refresh all my emotional health tools and um, the psychology and just like get back into that space. So I took uh, coach launch with Sammy and Spencer with Alive and Free Consulting and I took their six month program. It was amazing. It was very hard. God, it was rewarding though because God actually uh, revealed a lot of things inside of my heart, a lot of fears and tons of triggers of going all in on my coaching business again. And he unearthed the wounds that I had from 2017 when I hit that rock bottom. And he revealed um, to me that I had self-hatred towards New Age Kaylee. I had self-hatred towards Kaylee as a coach, um, which is why I always had this like internal battle with coaching. As long as I could just keep on the side, it was okay. But the moment was like, God's like, no, this is gonna be your career. I'm gonna get you an office, like all this, I would have never imagined. Um, then a lot of stuff started get getting revealed in my heart, a lot of unhealed trauma wounds from that season. Um, and it was really, really hard to work through, but I did it with the Lord. And he showed me where I had self-judgment um, and <clears throat> shame and just, so many different things in that season so from that i created the she's loved event and shared with women um the things that i learned from sammy and spencer in that coaching program to help them be able to identify their self-rejection self-hatred um, self-judgment any areas that they have to work on as well and it was really awesome. I did the She's Worth It event before that. So I did a couple events here and I'm kind of jumping off topic, but let me get back to where we're at this season. So um, yeah, I was doing these events while I was working with the kiddos. I came to the time when God was like, okay, um, your time is, is done. It's time to transition and go all in on my business. So took a leap of faith and I left the job I was with the kiddos at <laughs> I was at with the kiddos and question do any of you girls have like 
we want to be holy, right? But we don't want holy eyebrows, right? Am I the only one? I have like really holy eyebrows that just don't grow much. I don't know. So, yeah, I left the job with the kiddos and I went all in on my coaching business. And that was so, um, you would think it'd be so fun and exciting. Like, oh my gosh, like you're being called into your dreams that you had for seven years. But no, it was extremely hard. It's been extremely hard because when you go after God-given dreams, of course you're gonna have, um, you know, attacks from the enemy, but you're also gonna, your own nervous system is gonna get triggered because you're taking a leap into the unknown. Our nervous system, our body is designed to wanna keep us safe. When we go into the unknown, that can feel like a very unsafe place, especially if you're starting your own business, because now, you're not relying on anyone else to provide a paycheck for you. It's self-reliance. You have to grow in the relationship with yourself. That has been a relationship I've never given a lot of a focus and attention to so much as, as much as I've given my focus on relationships with God and other people. My relationship with myself was something that ever since 2017, I just kind of like pushed and shelved and didn't really give so much intentional focus to until going through coach launch and realizing my relationship with myself, self-love, self-compassion, I needed to grow in these areas. So taking a leap of faith into my own business is also a part of growing that relationship with myself and building trust within myself. And that has been a hard thing for me to do it's definitely not easy. I know that I'm sure for anyone starting their own business wouldn't be easy. And although I've been doing this since 2016, I've never really looked at it as like my career, my main job, you know, like now I have to look at it from more of a, a business standpoint and take things a lot more seriously. I've had to learn boundaries. I've had to, I have had to change so much to go after this dream. Like I remember working with the kiddos and feeling like life was just so fun and joyous and lighthearted. And I didn't really have to, you know, do like hard stuff all the time. Um, I would like lead Journey to Heal groups for uh, sexual abuse survivors and help them find healing in that time. That was, you know, always harder and coaching sessions here and there. But for the majority of my life, working with the kiddos, things were just like so much more lighthearted and fun. And when I did start to put on events, um, I felt like a part of me had to rise up to this higher place with God, to this, you know, more connected and confident Kaylee. And when I would do those events, that's how I felt like just taking this big leap of faith with God. And I just felt like just really connected and confident when I would go back um, you know, working with the kiddos in the middle of my events, I felt like playful and silly and giddy, like I could be a little immature and joyous and silly. But um, when I would think about Kaylee doing the events versus Kaylee with the kiddos, like Kaylee doing the events actually kind of intimidated me. And I know that might sound weird, just weird to some people, but she intimidated me because I felt like I couldn't be her all the time. And she was like so confident in her calling and you know do these really big events and hard things and i just yeah i f i felt like she was at a higher place with god than where i was if that makes sense to any of you um so this past season with going into my business i felt like a part of me had to die to my old self. I had to let go of these former ways of living and my daily activities to 
become this other, this Kaylee, like, who's this Christian life coach, and this is her career, and this is what she does for her livelihood, and this is her business, and that process of letting go, um, I felt like a caterpillar in, a, in the chrysalis, and I had to break free and learn to get my wings so I could fly, and I use that analogy because my very first coach training I went through was through Martha Beck Institute. She was, she's Oprah's life coach. And when I went through her coach training, um, she had the metaphor of the butterfly on her logo. It was all throughout her teaching. And so this past year when God started to call me into my coaching business, the butterfly symbol is what he began to use to speak to me about um, my coaching dreams and showing me like I'm gonna f I'm gonna fly with him, I'm gonna flutter on his grace and and you know just use butterflies to help me remember what he was doing in in supernatural ways too. So on my phone case, I actually have uh, butterflies all over my phone case. To help me remember when times get tough that God is is with me and remembering to meditate on his promises Luke 145 is also one of the verses that I've been standing on this whole past season and that is uh, bless blesses she who believed the Lord would fulfill his promises to her so yeah, the butterfly. So this past season, taking a leap of faith, going into my business, it feels so much like I'm having to die to my old self and step into this this new era with God. And a lot of things have shifted. So one, now my day-to-day -day looks different now i'm pursuing um entrepreneurship in this way and my finances look very different from you know getting a paycheck from somebody to being the person you are now responsible for to prove to provide um to pay bills with me and god and my husband of course well in this past season one thing that god has done is he has um, actually turn the tables with my husband and I and from the beginning of our relationship if you guys ever watched our testimony video of how we met <clears throat> um, my husband was homeless and addicted to heroin when I met him and I just coached him as God led me to and shared the love of God with him we ended up falling in love well I was the um, main breadwinner and provider when we first met in the beginning of our relationship because you know he was coming off the streets and like had to build up his life god has done so much work in him and he's really put in a lot of the work to do to go on the healing journey um he now has his own business as well um it's called taylor lawns he does landscaping and lawn service and he's been doing that for the past year. So when I went all in on my coaching business so many months ago, um, we began relying solely on my husband's income, which is amazing because he can actually, you know, be the provider for us now. But even that in itself was scary because God was calling me to learn to submit and trust and surrender to my husband in this position now. And I hadn't done that in our marriage before, not this way. Yeah, learning to trust my husband in that role took a lot. I felt like my, so my daily routine changed, my job changed, my income changed, my marriage changed. I had to change 
my home changed. <laughs> um, so yeah, tables turned. I made a little video about that. At our three year anniversary, the tables turned. Ross got approved for our new apartment, which we're at now. And um, yeah, we had to move. So we have a whole new home. Um, there is so much change in this past season that it was so hard a lot of times and I definitely noticed myself functioning out of survival mode um, more than I have been used to as a coach. Like I know the emotional health tools and I have a pretty good self-awareness to acknowledge like when I'm functioning in a triggered state, when my, what it is triggering me, like all those types of things. But with so much change happening in this past season and so many triggers having to work through and just things surfacing, um, so many things changing at once, I definitely feel like I struggled a lot, a lot in this past season. And, <clears throat> You know that's okay because <coughs> excuse me because none of us are perfect and even even I struggled and I just have to give myself compassion and understanding for that I think sometimes as a Christian life coach I definitely get uh, the inner critic my own inner critic and also the enemy at times um, telling me like the imposter syndrome who are you to be a coach you're struggling and I know like a lot of other coaches who have gone through my coach training like that was a huge topic they talked about in my coach training the imposter syndrome that we will have to work through a lot of us will have that and I 100% am one of those people who have to work through imposter syndrome from time to time um, but yeah I want to share this this past season because it was so hard I feel like this lip liner is not even showing <laughs> I mean it's not even lip liner it's brow pencil yeah I don't care <laughs> um, because this past season was so hard I feel like I'm still like recovering a little bit from a lot of the the changes. Like for example, my office isn't finished. The rest of the apartment is. We had to furnish everything and um, you know, get everything changed over. Moving is very stressful, but um, because I don't have my office finished, like there's still this part of me internally that feels like I'm. I'm not completely done with this whole move from this season. So I still feel like I'm a little bit in this process that's been a little hard for me. This past season, I'm gonna do my little of a mole right here. Oh, that didn't really work, this color. Do this other one, darker brown. But I like to just make it a little darker. Oh no, I love my mole. Anyways, yeah. <sighs> I still feel like I'm in the process a bit. And I feel like when I get this office done, and even my husband, he has things he's gotta like finish too. And we both can get everything done and feel like <sighs> we can officially just cut ties of everything in our past and just really settle in here like the transition's done there'll be such a sense of relief um that's what we're both expecting and believing for and praying for um, but we're also praying that god would give us that peace and joy now in the midst of this whole season which he has there's been tons of triggers and hardships and stress but there's also been glimmers of hope and just amazing things seeing god move Sometimes when you go through hard seasons though, I'm like right now, I feel like I'm still going through it a little bit, like not there yet. It can be harder to see all the blessings 
all the good things because like the pain or the stress or the weight of the the hardships can feel like it's almost like blinding my sight a little bit you know i have to like be intentional to stop and really focus in on like okay what are some blessings so i'll share some with you one i'm in my own christian life coaching office like it is a huge blessing i feel like i haven't truly got to come into the realization that i'm here that this is my own office i can have in-person sessions with my clients and that god believes that i'm ready and that you know this season this upcoming year is going to be my year for my dreams like i think I'm looking forward to more moments. I've had a few here or there, but more moments where I have that kind of like breakthrough revelation and let it sink and it hit my heart like, oh my gosh, God, like this is my office and have my first session here with a client and like just to continue to build up my business and have more and more and get to film my Testimony Tuesday videos here. And I feel like when that starts happening, a lot more of it's going to sink in. I'll get to get more into that place of joy and excitement. And um, that's a huge blessing. Also, being in a new environment, new we're in Austin, in South Austin. We were in Dripping Springs before, about 20, 30 minutes away. So we're in a new city, and even though... Um, New City, Dripping Springs, Austin. We always used to come to Austin, but I feel like we're now here where we can explore and we haven't actually really got to do that since we moved. Um, not much at least, so that's something we're looking forward to and that is a blessing again. Also in this past season, since I went all in my coaching business, my husband had changes in his business as well. And so, um, again, my schedule changed with him from having like full-time working on my business to now working on my business three days a week and working with him two days a week doing lawn and landscaping. And, you know, that in itself has been very physically difficult and challenging, but then also on the flip side, blessings because God's bonded my husband and I more being able to go out and do yards together and at first I felt some shame about it like oh going from you know my coaching dreams to now I'm helping my husband like again god I have to wait again like another hurdle another obstacle another change like how much more and and like I don't want to do this god but getting through that and just feeling like, no, I am again sacrificing, I am accommodating, I'm doing what I can to contribute and help my husband now. It's actually been such a blessing for the two of us and I actually really love mowing lawns and using the weed eater and blower and like I know that might sound so silly, especially when I think about my friends driving by and seeing me do that. It sounds so funny, but my family business was in construction and I grew up like working at my family business. It's one of my first jobs. So um, being in this type of a arena is not very weird to me. Like I've done in office work so I can help my husband with his business in that way. But I also, you know, helped my dad growing up doing waterproofing and caulking um, around uh, pools and and driveways and different things so it's actually been a little nostalgic for me to work with my husband and it's been a blessing because it's bonded us closer together and that's beautiful and then what else is a blessing I think just oh my gosh my friends my friends are a blessing I did have some challenging um, times with with some friends during this season, but it allowed us to bond deeper together and grow. There was just so many components of this season that were requiring, 
requiring me and my husband as well to grow and I'm thankful for my friends because they were huge supports to me in this past season and I definitely leaned on my friendships during this time so that was a blessing um, my kitties are here with us and there's always a blessing. I just, oh, I love my kitty cat so much. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this new year to see what it's gonna look like with my husband and I both on our own and our own businesses and, and just seeing how God is going to unfold the plans before us, how he's going to put his super on our natural and just guide us and help us. This past season, because there was so much change, one thing God revealed to me in my heart was that I had gotten comfortable in a lot of different ways. One, financially with my job before, um, with, with my day to day, with my home, just different things like that. He had shown me that a part of me had gotten comfortable and that a part of my heart had not been as surrendered. Like I had tried to hold on to some of my comforts before. So as I, as he began to remove different things from my life to call me through this different direction, because my hands weren't as open, my heart posture wasn't as open. I mean, it doesn't mean I'm not obedient. I'm always an obedient, but I mean like, I had fears and the fears was like trying to control like oh my gosh god i'm feeling out of control because there's so much movement happening so i say that because god began to show me that he's calling me into deeper surrender to a place of just letting my business be surrendered to him my marriage my home like yes it always has been but it's a deeper surrender that he's inviting me to so this upcoming year surrender is my word for the year 2024 and my church we're starting off with three weeks of fasting and you know praying on whatever word god's given each of us and so that's gonna be my word and what is yours i would love to hear um I hope that this was fun for you to like catch up with me and just get to share a little bit about what's been going on with my life and where I've been. I definitely did take a little break from posting uh, during the move because it was like I needed a little sabbatical from all the, the work, a little break and that's okay. So all right guys, what do you think? No makeup to makeup. <laughs> My husband and I are going to go on our date now. So I will catch up with you guys soon. I love you guys so much. And what are you hoping for in 2024? What word are you standing on? Where is your heart? I love you guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And have a beautiful and blessed rest of your day.